Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 27 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we are going to be tackling theming up our navigation menu. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you might notice is I am using a completely different text editor. I am using the brackets text editor, which I highly encourage you to use. I love this text editor. I use it every day at work. Um, and it's just, there's a lot of really cool features that you'll notice about it. We're not going to cover all of the features of brackets because that's not what this video is about. However, I highly suggest that you download brackets and you use it for all of your site theming. It is a really, really great text editor. All right. And it's also free. Um, so let's get started here. We want to kind of match our navigation to this little color scheme that we have going on here in the header and just kind of make it look a little nicer. It's kind of bland, kind of boring. So let's uh, pop open the HTML and see what we are working with here. Um, now you can see that all it is is a wrapper, a couple of wrappers here. Um, we have the UL uh, list of LIs in the A. It's a pretty straightforward menu. If you've ever hand-coded an HTML site, it's not much different. It just has a couple of wrappers on it. Um, one of the things I want you to remember is that the ID is navigation for the main wrapper because we're just going to be using that. So in our CSS here, we have a section um, cut off here. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> huh. We have a section here specifically for our navigation. So this is where we are going to be working. Now with this, with, there's a couple of things that we're going to want. We're going to want the navigation, which we have above, but we're going to want the navigation UL. Um, for one of our classes there, we're going to want the navigation ULLI is another one that we're going to want there. And then finally, we're also going to want the navigation... U-L-L-I-A, and there actually is a couple more here that we want, um, being mainly the hover states and the active states on this navigation. So we're going to do navigation, U-L-L-I-A, colon hover to grab our hover state, and then we're going to comma. Um, we're going to do navigation, U-L-L-I-A dot active, and we'll explain this in a second. And then we're also going to do navigation ULLIA dot active trail. Now, the way this works is these last two that we put in here, the active trail and the active, are classes that are given to us by Drupal when we navigate to a specific page. So if you look here, um, we're on the home page. So the home uh, link here will be navigation. U L L I A and it adds the class active here. Now, if you do have drop down menus, and for instance, let's say that uh, these two pages were also within a drop down menu here, which we're not going to really cover or get involved in with this because the theming of it's a little wacky. So for right now, we're just not going to worry about that. But you would also get if you were on sub pages, you would get an active trail class as well. So that's just to kind of uh, style things up a little bit nicer for hover states and active states. So let's dive into this. We're going to give this a refresh so that we can grab those new declarations over here in our side so that we can live code these and we need to save this before that will actually work. So there we go. There's our active trail and our hover states, and we can see that because that's the active one. So what we're going to do first is not the active state. So we're going to right click on one of the other links and inspect the element here. And when you're hovered over this, you can see there's quite a lot of padding on this A. And it's really just a little bit unnecessary. We can move this thing around as we see fit, and we don't quite need to move it around with padding. That's not exactly the best way to do it. So if we scroll down here, you can see a little bit lower in our um, live coding is the classes that we declared. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of that padding off. Now we might add some of it back in and it looks like we need an important added to that. We'll probably add some of that back in because that looks terrible. Um, in fact, we're going to do that now. We're going to take the padding off of the top and bottom, but we're going to put about 10 
on the left and the right. Just to kind of give some spacing here, we're gonna increase the font size maybe to 17 pixels, um, and we'll bump it up one more there to 18 because I like the way that that looks. And honestly, I don't know if we need to do too much more to this, except for the fact that I don't like the fact that this is line not lined up with the edge. And the reason is because we've put 10 pixels of padding on both sides of our links. And if we inspect the element here on the last one, you can see that 10 pixels where the padding is kind of pushing us over even farther. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna increase the padding on the left side to 20 to get the exact same spacing that we're looking at right now. But then we're gonna take the padding that's on the right side and we are going to set it to zero. So this is going to be how this is going to look here. Now there's still a little space over there and that's probably coming off of one of these other elements in here or something might have it shifted over a little bit but for right now this is what we want to work with here. So we're going to copy that and we are going to place that into our style sheet over here where we have our A tags and the nice thing about brackets is you can highlight everything and just tab it in. It's one of the reasons why I really like this. It's it's a lot faster to do some of the, the common tasks that you do every day as a web developer. Alrighty, so there we go. We have that set. The next thing we want to tackle is we want to set the hover and active states of this to match that nice color that we picked for the things up top. So we're going to come down here and we are going to change the color here and now you can see that when we type directly into here it predicts all of the CSS uh, attributes and selectors that we can grab um, based off the letters that you put in and then all you got to do is hit enter and then if you start to type in your color hash there is a plugin that will allow it to scan through the document that is above you and use colors that you've already used so it's a little bit faster than trying to remember what they all are finding them in other calls and then copying and pasting but that's another nice little bit so we're going to set that up that way, and we'll see that this first link will change as well as our hover states. So now we're kind of getting to where we want to be here. Now the last thing we need to do is just simply move it down um, and kind of over a little bit more. So we are going to inspect the element on this guy. We are going to find the navigation. And you can see here that it already is positioned specifically, and we kind of changed that positioning a little bit. But we can change the top of this to kind of move it down, and 20 looks to be about what we want. So we're going to come over here to this, and we are going to do top 20 pixels. And we'll save that, and that should move that down. And then we are also going to make sure that nothing's really pushing us over. It looks to be right where we want it to be. So we're just going to leave this alone. Now we have a couple of bits in our CSS here that we haven't used, but we might want to use them later. So I'm just going to leave them in for now. If we end up not using them, I will just go ahead and take those off. Now this is an extremely short video because I'm hoping to release another one right after this since I've been neglecting it a little bit, in which case we're going to start uh, tackling maybe this homepage slider. I'm not real sure yet. Um, so I'm going to keep this one short. There's not a whole lot that we did there, but you can see as we click around that this active state is moving along with wherever we click. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of One Stop How To Guys Practical Drupal Development. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.